Uh, you can actually look up um, Klaus Schwab. Uh, there's something called BlackRock. They're the largest real estate company in the world. BlackRock. He's a part of that, BlackRock. Um, and this is probably, I probably free speech, but it's kind of scary to say these things. Uh, you can look up the World Economic Forum, and uh, they've got their own little manifesto on there. And uh, they'll absolutely, absolutely uh, tell you what they're all about. Um, but what I want you to do is, is I want you to forget everything you just heard for a little while. Um, he stirred the pot, got, uh, talking about the country, talking about voting, talking about family, talking about politics. That's a deep, deep rabbit hole. Uh, that uh, it's hard to get out of and the conversations just can keep going and going and going and going about all the possibilities. Uh, but what I want you to do is I want you to open it up to the book of Psalms chapter 110. Psalms chapter 110. Psalms chapter 110. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you would uh, quiet our minds and our hearts, quiet this place for just a little a little while, that we may uh, gather this truth, apply it to our lives, and uh, Lord, do the best we can to please you. Do the best we can to love you and love others uh, and uh, lift ourselves when we're down. Uh, Lord, I'd ask that you'd use this message this morning to help us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, uh, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of power. In the beatitudes of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall uh, strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads of many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way, therefore shall he lift up his head. I want to preach this morning about a brook in the way. A brook in the way. Now this psalm is a prophetic psalm. Uh, some preachers, they say it's uh, about the first coming, and some say it's the second coming. Uh, but I would like to take a first coming view of it this morning. This psalm is a, um, uh, it looks forward to the coming of Christ to Bethlehem, to Jerusalem. And David is projecting his vision to the first coming of Jesus. Um, uh, and that's um, the viewpoint I'd like to take, uh, even though I think that the second coming is implied also here. Now, the basic outlook is this. Uh, it is toward the coming of Christ the first time, and it's a picture of what is commonly known as is the Passion Week. The Passion Week. Anybody familiar with the Passion Week? Uh, uh, the Week of Suffering. The week of suffering that uh, we call, and many denominations call, the Passion Week. You can also find that in um, uh, Psalm 109 about uh, uh, slander. It pictures the week that Christ suffers, a, a week that, um, uh, that the time that he set his face toward Jerusalem. Um, and uh, at Jerusalem, he would be crucified. He'd be buried, and he would rise again. And uh, I, I like that. I like that. Not that Jesus died, not that he was buried, but I know the end of the story, amen, that he rises again. Now, it's a picture um, uh, uh, mostly as a journey, step by step by step. Uh, he was going for the last time. Think, now think, this is the last time. You ever do the last, the last time you sell a house and you walk out of it and close the door? You sell a car and it drives off the lot. You, you, you um, uh, get rid of things. It's the last time you'll see it. It's the last time you'll have it. It's the last time you'll hold it. Uh, now think about how Jesus must have suffered as he realized that his days were counted. His days were numbered. They were up. Then came the incredibly awful time of suffering. 
the suffering of Gethsemane, when the Bible speaks that he prayed so hard and he was so concerned that the sweat drops on his face were as blood. They came down off his face as blood. Then as he went to the court of Caiaphas, where he was to be tried, and in a mock trial, which is just basically a setup, uh, he went on to Pilate, and from Pilate he went to Herod, and from Herod he went back to Pilate. And as he went back to Pilate and, and went through the motions there in their conversation, and he washed his hands of it and said, I have nothing to do with this, and they released Barabbas and took Jesus as the Jews cr cried out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. The scourging began with the cat of nine tails, where they took the cat of nine tails and they beat him, and they beat him, and they beat him. And they beat him and continued to beat him. They hit him 39 times. Isaiah 52, 14 says that he was marred such that you couldn't even tell he was a man. Beaten so badly, you couldn't even tell him he was a man. And that, that's not it. At that point, it was like, okay, we beat you, we mocked you, we, 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 uh, we made fun of you for a minute. Now here's a cross that probably weighed a couple hundred pounds. Take it, drag it up the hill of Gethsemane. They beat him and they beat him and they beat him and they beat him. I remember uh, 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 scarring myself and bleeding and, and, and cutting myself and bleeding and running into <laughs> telephone poles and scarring up my face and doing up all kinds of things, and, but not so much that I, you couldn't tell I was a man and then follow that, here's your cross up the hill to Calvary, and there the crucifixion took place. There was the shame. Imagine the shame of Christ suffering on the cross, Jesus naked before all, people backhanding him and punching him and putting a bag over his head and punching him in the face and said, who was that, king? Who was that, savior? Who is it that hit you? And then imagine Brother uh, uh, Jewel Brothers, I couldn't imagine. Brother Stoltz, who's not here this morning, I couldn't imagine. I've got just this little bit of patchy hair on my face. And Deacon will grab it and pull it. Man, that hurts. Don't do that. Jesus had a beard. He didn't, he didn't have a goatee. He didn't have a, a handlebar mustache. He had a, he had a beard, as many men did then. And they took it and ripped it out of his face. Now, I don't know if another man held him with his arms behind his back where they yanked it out of his face or they yanked on him and he fell to the ground. And maybe they put his, their foot on the back or on his neck and they yanked as his head was up and his back was wrenched. They didn't care. He was a piece of meat there to be crucified, beaten, and made fun of. Plucked his beard out, mocked him, spit on him, buffeted him, probably hit him in his private parts. You say, Brother Jake, don't say that. Why not? He suffered incredible, excruciating pain for us, making fun of him as the king while they took a crown, a mocking crown of thorns, put it on his head and shoved it down, I believe, to where the thorns scraped his skull. And everything else that led up to the suffering of Jesus, the shame of Jesus, the, 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 the heartache of Jesus. Now, in this time of suffering, Luke, there's an unusual statement. There's a, there's a, there's a statement here that it, it kind of, it feels misplaced. And it says that he shall drink of the brook in the way. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Now this brook symbolizes refreshment. It symbolizes, especially in here where it says verse five and six, it talks about war. It talks about siege. It talks about crushing his enemies and piling up dead bodies. And it says, man, he's been at war and he's been suffering and the suffering of war. And it says he found a brook in the way. That brook is a refreshing stream. It's water that we don't have to be afraid to take a drink of. I've been places before they're like, don't drink that. It looks drinkable, but don't drink it. Don't drink it. God will always supply a brook in the way that will refresh you. Now, David likens verse 5 and 6 to a king in battle. There's a king leading his forces. A day is hot. Now, I, I have an imagination, and what I want you to do is I want you to engage your imagination this morning. I want you to listen. I want you to, uh, uh, to dial in. Forget about everything else. Dial into the message this morning. A king, a battle, a hot day. The desert is dry. 
It's scorching, it's unrelenting, it's unforgiving. And the king comes to a place where he finds a stream, not a mirage, not a, a hope deferred, make it the heart stick, but he found a stream and he says, there's a brook in the way. There's a brook in the way. And the king stops on that hot day and he gets refreshment from the book, from the brook. Now, this is, I said, David was, um, he doesn't get the attribute. We think of him as king, but he was also prophet. The Holy Spirit used him to write prophecy. And chapter 110 of Psalms is a prophetic psalm. It's not about David. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus, and he's talking about Jesus. But as Jesus goes to Bethlehem, and Jesus is in the, the Passion Week, and he's in the week of suffering, of sweat drops of blood, or sweat, uh, sweat drops as of blood, and uh, 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 people getting ready to betray him and curse him and forget him. This week of suffering, where he said, Do you know he prayed three times to his father, Lord, not my will. I don't want to die, but I, not my will, Lord, your will. I'll do your will. And Jesus went through with it. But what was the brook in the way of Christ in this week of suffering? What is this little encouragement that Jesus found in that week of suffering? I think very quickly, number one, it tells us that in your, your, your season of suffering, there's a brook. God doesn't lead you to a desert and a valley to, to die. God doesn't lead you to a valley and a desert to to uh, uh, dry up and he doesn't leave you. God doesn't send mirages. God doesn't disillusion you. You walk, David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't stay in the valley. Don't stay there. And Jesus didn't stay in suffering. Jesus went through the, the week of suffering because he knew what was going to happen on the other side. Jesus was standing on the promises of God. You get that? Hey, hey, listen, look up here, look up here, look up here. Jesus was standing on the suffering or on the promises of God. He had no, Jesus knew, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Jesus didn't have to fear the cross. Jesus didn't have to fear the Roman soldiers. Jesus didn't have to fear Peter turning on him and, the, uh, and, and Judas betraying him and the, uh, the disciples running away from him, scared because of association. Jesus was standing on the promises of God. Jesus knew that when he left heaven and was born of the Virgin Mary, and he lived a perfect life and he went through all that he went through and he went through the week, the passion week of suffering where he said, not my will, but thy will. He knew the promise on the other side was resurrection. He knew on the other side was a throne. He knew on the other side was an iron, uh, an iron scepter to rule the nations. He knew that God Almighty would take his soul and put it back in his body and he'd be resurrected and ascended back up to heaven and there's still another promise that he's coming back again. Jesus went through the, the suffering because he knew what was on the other side. I tell you today, Christian, you may, go be, you may be going through the valley of the shadow of death, but if you'll stand on the promises of God that he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll give you the peace that passes all understanding. Wait a second. Your son just died. How do you have peace? Your wife just died. How do you have peace? Job, you lost everything. How is it that you're, you're, you're keeping it together? Because I have the peace that passes all understanding because I have a God that does not fail. I have a God that does not sway. I have a God that does not vary. I have a God that does not, uh, that, that does not act by his emotion. God says, these are my words. I will magnify my word above my name. He will give you a brook in the way. He'll give you a brook in the way. Now, I don't know what the brook in the way was for Christ. I don't know what it was. Now, to go with me there. Jesus, here he is in the week of suffering. This is not a time for laughter. It's not a time that he's bouncing children on his knee and, and counting to five with them and and showing them their, their Hebrew ABCs, you know? He, this isn't a time he's playing hopscotch. This isn't a time that he's, he's carving animals and giving them to kids. This isn't a time that he's, this isn't a time that he's healing. This isn't a time that he's preaching. This is a time of no laughter, no enjoyment as far as we know and see and read. In my eyes, I see dark, I see gloom, I see suffering, I see shame, and I see that on your life and my life. We go through seasons of dark and gloom and suffering and, and maybe shame or, or embarrassment. Uh, I was talking to a couple yesterday where I was talking about be, being a man, and I said, man, sometimes men, we have this idea of what a man is, and then we look at ourselves and say, well, I don't measure up to that. What's wrong with me? Why am I not that man? And then we fall into this, this hole of 
of, of self-imprisonment and we suffer shame going, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And, 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 and if you'll measure yourself by the Bible, you can figure it out. But if you'll measure yourself by the world standards of what a man is, you'll, you're doomed. Why don't I have those muscles? That's what women are attracted to. Why don't I have that money? Why don't I have that car? Why don't I have this? And I should be better at this. And I've failed. And you'll suffer shame. And Jesus went through all of that. The crown of thorns, the cat of nine tails, the agonies of the cross. You know, I think maybe even Jesus was sorry and felt pain because of the men that were crucified next to him. You say, what do you mean by that? In the beginning, God created. You know, God's highest creation is not trees, are not oceans, is not the grass. We are made in the image of Christ, in the image of God, and there, God's image was being beaten and crucified just like him. I think Jesus, his spirit suffered but doesn't the Bible say he came to save sinners? He came to save sinners. That's what he was there for. Now, we call it the week of passion or the passion week. Yet, during that week, his sufferings, what, what was the brook in the way? What was the little encouragement? What was the thing that refreshed him? What was the thing that make it, made him go on? What was it? Was it, was it um, uh, 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 Mary? I like Mary and Martha, how they hang out with Jesus. They love Jesus, and Jesus loved them. Was it Lazarus, and Mary and Martha, who would, I think, cook for him and make him meals and minister to him? I wonder if it was that. I wonder if it was um, uh, Mary. You know who Mary Magdalene is? The lady who was possessed of the seven devils who I think loved Jesus more than anybody. She, loved, she was a true follower and a disciple, even though she is not a, as accredited and, and all those different things. But Mary Magdalene, she was possessed of seven devils, which Jesus cast them out. And I know that she loved him. And I know that she'd do almost anything for him. And she stood with him when everybody else ran away. Did he, did he, was that his oasis? Did that, did that give him encouragement? Did that help him go on? knowing that he was suffering for the cross, knowing that, that um, uh, wh where do I have it? Knowing that uh, Peter was going to curse him and deny him, knowing that Judas was going to kiss him and sell him out, knowing that the other disciples were going to run away, no association, run and hide in caves. I don't know that guy. I don't know that guy. Now, let me ask you, I'm not asking for a loyalty vote here. I'm not trying to get a, a barometer, or a, a thermo barometer. I'm not trying to get a gauge on, on uh, 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 the, the temperament here, but if your pastor, and let's just say uh, uh, I'm your pastor, and I'm not trying, let's just say you had a pastor, and your pastor stood for the word of God and stood for what was right, and then the world turned on him because he said something that got out on social media, and the world turned on him and accused him and hated on him and turned into some big, big uh, trending thing. Would you stand with your pastor or run with front of your pastor? Hey, don't you go to that church? Oh, no, I don't, I don't go to that church. Better to suffer shame for doing right than suffer shame for doing wrong. Uh, I believe it's 1 Peter chapter 3. He says, man, it's better, to be it's better to be accused and suffer for doing right and suffer for Jesus than it is to, to pay the consequences of being a moron. If you're going to suffer, be rewarded for it. If you're going to suffer, get glory for it. If you're going to suffer, listen, stand with those who do right. But Jesus, everybody ran from him. They ran. As Jesus was dying to save sinners. Wasn't that the purpose why he came into the world? Even now in his death, maybe it was the thief on the cross. Maybe that was the brook in the way. Jesus had the, the nails in his hands and his feet. The spear was being collected to be thrown and jabbed and thrust into his side the contemplation of breaking his legs so he would suffocate, so he couldn't lift himself. Imagine taking the ball of your foot or the bones in your feet to get leverage to push off of a stake that was put into your foot, into your feet, to lift off of that just to get a little bit of breath. Jesus found an oasis during this time 
Jesus found a brook in the way? Now, the Bible doesn't tell us what that brook was. The Bible doesn't say if it was a little child who gave Jesus a smile. You ever have a little kid that'll pick a dandelion? The boys, you do it for their moms or whatever the case, and take that little dandelion and give it to their mom. Maybe that was the brook in the way. Sarah sent me a picture of, uh, of, of uh, Hudson, and it had a big old leaf, and it looked like a heart. I, I think I, I was in Texas when she sent it, and she sent it to me, and um, I think I was on my 10-hour break, and I was laying in bed, and, and she sent it to me, and I was looking at it, and it said, send this to Daddy so he knows that I love him. Oh, I love that. You know what that is? I'm out on the road. I hate being out. I don't want to be away. I want to be soul winning 25 hours a week and praying and visiting and going to find backslidden people and choke them. No, I, I, I want to get right with God, you heathen. Uh, uh, I don't want to do that. Um, uh, well, I do, but I don't. You, you get it. I, I, that's what I want to be doing. And I hate being away from family because I feel like I'm here. I'm needed. I'm, I, I got to be where I need to be. And uh, being out and, and, and whatnot and, and having things like that, you know what that was for me in West Texas? That was an oasis. That was a brook in the way. That was a brook in the way. And Jesus, going through his week of suffering and passion, knowing he's going to be crucified, had a brook in the way. I think that's, that's, that's God just showing his grace. God will be gracious up until the very end. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us what the brook in the way, in the way was. We don't know exactly what it was, but we do know is that there was something special during the week that Jesus had to suffer. There was something refreshing to him during his suffering. It was a brook in the way. I don't know what it was, and you don't know what it was. And that's not the point. The point is, is that in your suffering and in your heartache and in your pain, there's a brook. There's a brook. I've got two things I want to give to you, two thoughts. Number one, every Christian should be a brook in the way. Every Christian should be a brook in the way. So many times, I, I, I want to name some people very quickly, and I, there are so many. There are, there are so many, but just right on this side, the Pips, the Vanzulans, the Jules, even Brother Goble, sometimes. <laughs> you guys have been a brook in the way to me. You've been a brook because a lot of people think, well, he's too young to be a pastor. He's too young. He's not experienced. He doesn't have the, the, the life experiences. So, so you need a pastor who's went out and made a bunch of mistakes and had a bunch of heartaches to be a pastor? You don't need that at all. You need somebody who will dwell within the confines of this book. No matter their color, no matter their background, silver spoon in their mouth or no spoon in their mouth. Had mom and dad at home in a perfect little home and the white, white, pit, white picket fence and the perfect little doggy and they had good grades and all that. And that's all great. There's nothing disparaging about that at all. And you, and you want a pastor like that or you want a pastor who, who had to get a GED and, and got in fights. And I think that's the one we had. And got in fights and had a broken home. Hey, God can use anybody. God can use anybody who will say, Joshua 1.8. And what David said in the whole chapter of 119, thy statutes, thy laws, thy commands, thy testimonies, thy precepts, I want to obey those. I want to live in the confines of this book, and I don't want to go anywhere else. We just sang it. A tent or a cottage, why should I care? They're building a palace for me over there. Oh, folks, the best, the best palaces come with all the greatest furnishings if you live in the confines of this book. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. He said the same thing in Deuteronomy 20. He said, when you rise up in the morning, teach your kids. When you go to bed at night, teach your kids. Use your fingers, use your mouth, use your toes, use your hands, use your billboards, use your whiteboards, use your chalkboards, use your mouth, use your voice to tell your kids these commands and these precepts. When you rise up, when you sit down, sit down, when you go out, when you come in, teach your kids, teach the next generation. And the greatest, the, the, the greatest mistake that America has made was taking God out of school. Why? Because the communists knew to, we couldn't get America with a war, so we'll get them with ideology. And to get them with ideology, we got to get rid of their idol, and their idol is God. We got to get rid of God. Get rid of God and put in us. And that's what happens to our school. Our schools have been infected 
infected. No, we, we label it communism. We label it liberalism. We, la- we, uh, we label it left wing. But it's really the prince of the power of the air. So when you vote this Tuesday, be careful who you're voting for. Because you very well be could be you very well could be casting a vote for the prince of the power of the air and a tool that is being used by him. I know some Christians who are so locked up by this conviction that they won't vote on conviction. Well, some of them Republicans ain't saved either. It, it's ba- voting is basically pick your poison. Pick your poison. Our country needs our country needs Christian leaders. Bible-believing, gospel-sharing leaders. But I'm not, I, I'm not a president, and I won't be one. You aren't, and you won't be one. Nobody in here is getting it. You might, one of the kids or somebody with, with some, some, some life left to them. They may get into politics. I didn't, that came out wrong. Uh, <laughs> I meant that had the energy to get into politics and, and fight the battles. I just... So Brother Tom Jewel back there like, I can't believe he just said that. <laughs> he just called us dead, uh, uh, old people. Um, uh, but I, I'm not going to be a president. I'm not going to be a senator. I'm not going to be a, 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 an ambassador. I'm not going to be any of those. I'm, I, I'm an ambassador for Christ. That, that's, well, that's what I am. That's what I'm going to be. Uh, so what is my job to do that? Listen, all great countries that have forgotten God have fallen, but the individual that has not forgotten God will prosper. Jeremiah was locked up in prison buying land when it was being besieged by Babylon, when his land was being ta- when it was being consumed. He was in prison saying, hey, here, here, take, go get the money that I have and go buy this land. Christians can prosper even in a wicked nation if we obey and live in the confines of that book. But what, what, is, what is my responsibility as a Christian? What do I do? I've got to be a brook in the way. I should be a brook in the way. You say, a brook in the way? Yes, because my brothers and my sisters are suffering. You're going through a week of suffering. You're having your passion week. You may be in a season that you feel like a Job. You may be in a season where you feel like, man, I'm down and out. What you need is, is another Christian who's a brook in the way. Maybe a smile when no one else is smiling. Maybe a pat on the back when no one else will give it. I remember captivating PNC Bank in, by gunpoint. No, at a, 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 in, in New Haven. A conversation broke out. And I just was talking about my principles. And I'm talking the tellers, the, 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 the fella in the office coming out, and, and seven or eight people standing around. A brother Hiles, four, a small crowd of four or 500 people gathered around. Uh, uh, literally, seven or eight people gathered around, and no diss on brother Hiles. Uh, uh, um, but if you're brother Hiles, a small crowd is four or 500. Uh, but um, uh, are we just talking principles, principles, principles. But anytime I get a conversation with somebody, I want to interject the gospel. Yesterday, I was getting my hair cut. And this guy, he's right online. I mean, he swears and whatnot, and and we're talking. And anything and everything is like, you know, but God, but Jesus, but church. It's all church-oriented. It's all Jesus-oriented. It's all what's going to happen. He's like, yeah, man, that's exactly right. And, And the guy next to him is listening. I know he's listening. They're not over there having a conversation. I'm talking loud. I'm I'm talking, and if I'm talking, it's usually loud. Uh, uh, I'm talking, and uh, that's what my Aunt Debbie said. She said, we don't have quiet conversations. Uh, But um, that's why Pastor Jackson and I had to go outside a couple weeks ago. (laughs) Because it wasn't quiet. Um, uh, But that was good anyway. Uh, um, uh, But I was talking to this guy, God, God, Jesus, Jesus, Savior, heaven, hell. Why? Because that guy's got a soul, and he's going to go to hell, and I need to be a brook in the way. I need to be a brook in the way. Scott Carter was a brook in the way for Keith Rollins. A brook in the way. Why? Talking about church, talking about Jesus, talking about heaven. Well, I'm not a really good soul winner, but just walk the walk and talk the talk talk and walk the talk. They say that your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. But back it up with your words. Back it up. And I want to be in the brook, a brook in the way. I want to be a smile when everybody else is frowning. I want to be an encouragement. I want to bring life to a room. I, I, not that it's about me, but who I represent. Don't we get that? That the Christian life is us letting Christ live through us. Man, I did that in traffic yesterday. Or no, it was this morning. Going to pick up Bill. Some clown couldn't decide what lane they wanted to be in. 
Turn, Houston was with me. Turned their turn signal on, was going to cut over two lanes to turn, and then didn't. And my flesh was like, get out of the car. Let me drive it for you, clown. Pow. Some old lady. I'm, I love you. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I did it this morning. I did it this morning. For them that know the truth, for them that know truth and know to do good and do with it not, to them it is sin. Man, Christian growth, and I said, look, Christian living is Christ living through me. Christ living through me. We, and I know we dissed that some years ago. What would Jesus do? But truly, what would Jesus do? You'd find it out by finding out what the Bible says and living according to that book. I want to be a brook in the way for people. I don't want to be mad. I don't want to be mean to people. A smile when no one else is smiling. A pat on the back when nobody else will give it. Maybe some encouraging words to somebody who you know is trying and failing and getting up and going and going through life and having a hard time. Be a brook in the way to that person. Be a brook in the way. You say, I need a brook in the way. The best way to find a brook in the way is to be a brook in the way. And don't you think, and I do, but don't you think it would be incredible? It's an awesome thing to help people. It's an awesome thing. And I was able to help somebody this week, and I gave the glory to God. I said, thank, God, thank you for letting me. I didn't go, I'm a good guy, even though I am. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't say I was. I didn't do that. I didn't act that way. I said, God, thank you for giving to me so I could give to them. Even though I don't necessarily and I can't necessarily afford it. I can't necessarily afford the time, afford the effort, afford the money. But Lord, you gave it to me, and I'm going to give out because, Lord, 10% is not yours. 100% is. I just do my, dedi ded my, my dedication tithe on Sundays because that is what God requires of me, but it ain't mine. You see these here? They're not mine. Amen. They're God's. God wants me to use these to be a brook in the way. These eyes, if I see a need and I have the ability to fill a need and I don't fill a need, he that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord and the Lord will repay. The Lord is debtor to no man. It's an awesome thing to be able to help a weary brother or sister, help carry their load, help carry their burdens. A pat on the back, a smile, or an I love you. I love you. My father-in-law told me, he's like, I'm gonna start saying that all the time to people. I love you. I love you. I love you. Because we don't know how long we have each other. Like, Bob, don't tell me you love me. That's weird. Uh, uh, I, I love you. I love you. I, hey, Rhonda, she, my mother-in-law, she usually listens. I love you guys. I love you guys. Even though you're married to Bob, I love you. And, and uh, uh, give a helping hand. Give a help. You know what? I hate, I don't ever want to get a truck. Hey, I'm getting ready to move. Do you think we can? Have no. <laughs> Sorry, it's full of asbestos. We can't use it. <laughs> COVID 19's back there. We can't use it. Uh, 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 but but be a helping a helping hand to people, a helping hand. And I want to say, as I started off being a preacher, and I I was hesitant to do it. I went out to eat with um, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Pip took Jamie and I out to eat, and she asked me. She said, "Brother Jake, if your dad retires and he's not able to do this anymore, will you be our pastor?" She didn't say, "What are your thoughts on it?" She didn't say, "How are you thinking about it?" She flat out said, will you be our pastor? Uh, I felt like this big. <laughs> We're sitting at Richard's and I was just kind of like, mm, shrunk down. You want to know why? Because I didn't think I could. I didn't see it in me. There was a time some years ago, uh, standing out after a service uh, in the back of the, uh, sitting around the back of a truck and it was John Lemming and Rennell, Chris and Lenny and Ben and uh, Rick Lazat, uh, can't remember who else. And they were like, dude, it's in you. It's in you. You got it. You can do it. And I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> you got, no, I can't. You guys just don't want to do it, so you're throwing it on me. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is it, it wasn't in me until I asked God to put it in me. You understand that? It wasn't in me. It was my will. My will was no. My will was no, you, I'm not doing this. I don't want to preach. I can't preach. I'm not able to do it. I can't. So I would, I would consult with the Bible and consult with, with folks who said, hey, we see something in you. 
You know what that was? It was a brook in the way because there was a battle happening inside of me, a battle saying, you can do it. That was the Holy Spirit of God because I'm saved. And it was the carnal man saying, we don't want to do it. But that new man was like, you can do it. Don't you understand how important this is? This is the greatest calling in the world. This is the biggest office in the world. This is huge. You can see people saved. You can help your father. You can help your family. You can be an encouragement to people. You can preach the word of God. Jake, you can do it. And the carnal man was like, that's a lot of pressure. I don't want to do that. But then along comes a pip. And along comes a Van Zulin. And along comes a Jewel. And along comes a brother-in-law, Alex. And along comes a, a, a Joe and Mrs. Goble and a Brother Stoltz and a Park Hedges. And then people my age who come up at the front and shake my hand and say, you're our pastor. You know what that was? That was a brook in the way for me. That was a brook in the way for me. Now I wanna be a brook in the way for you. And I want you to be a brook in the way for me. And I want you to be a brook in the way for others. Everybody's having a hard time. There ought to be some brooks there ought to be some brooks. There ought to be some people out there who cheer up others, who have, a, who, who have just this disposition of helping others. Not disposition, but a position. There ought to be some people who are brooks in the way for everybody that's having a tough time. Be kind to everybody because everybody's having a tough time. Nobody needs your slander. Don't you understand that? Nobody needs your slander. Nobody needs your crabby, stinking disposition. I said stinking. Dis crabby disposition. Nobody needs your attitude. Nobody needs your opinion. Well, I just don't like what they did with us. Shut up and be a brook in the way. You say, Brother Jackson, that's assault. I did it spiritually. I did it in the chambers of my imagery. <laughs> Uh, 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 now everybody's afraid listen everybody's afraid of what's happening in the country everybody's afraid of what's happening politically everybody's afraid of, 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 of heart attacks and everybody's afraid of cancer and everybody's afraid of car accidents and, and violence in our nation everybody's concerned a talk of nuclear war if you pay attention to the headlines a, a, a talk of world war three if you pay attention to the headlines a talk of the great reset if you look it up don't google it Use um, Duck, Duck, Go. They don't track your stuff. Um, you said, what? Yeah, Duck, Duck, Go. Sir. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Duck, Duck, Go. Yeah, good people. Track that stuff. Um, uh, uh, that's a plug, Duck, Duck, Go. I expect royalties. Um, uh, but every one of us, we're afraid. We have heavy hearts. People are walking around. Brother Park has a, heart, a, a heavy heart. Whether he shakes your hands and puts a smile on his face, he's got a heavy heart. Be a brook in the way. The jewels carry a heavy heart. Be a brook in the way. Some of you have wayward children. Be a brook in the way. Some of you have a, 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 an embarrassing, shameful past. Be a brook in the way. Be a brook in the way. <clears throat> Some of you suffer health issues. Be a brook in the way. I'm not telling you, uh, uh, those of you who are suffering, to be a brook in the way. I'm saying if you're all right, if things are okay, if you're, it, it, could, it could be better, couldn't it? It could always be better. But be a brook in the way because people need you. You may say, I'm not needed. I'm not important. Yes, you are. Be a brook in the way. Be encouragement. Number two, very, very quickly, five minutes, five minutes. Number one, be a brook in the way. Number two, have a brook in the way. You say, have a brook in the way? Yes. What do you mean by that? What, what, what does this mean? You should have a brook in the way. Folks, I know that, you, that we have it rough. I know that our troubles and our problems and our difficulties and our heartaches and our, our tribulations, I know that they come and they go and they seem to stay longer each time that they're there, but have a brook in the way. Have yourself a brook in the way. Be prepared. Know where your brook is. Now you say, preacher, what is this brook in the way? What is it? Now for me, I'll tell you what it is. One brook in the way for me, always has been, is church. It's church. Folks, when I was at my lowest, I showed up. When I was at my most backslidden, I showed up. When I had the hardest heart I've ever had, I showed up. I showed up. When I was discouraged, I showed up. When I didn't want to, I showed up. I can tell you, uh, I'm, I'm not batting a thousand, but I'm pretty close. I showed up. They're not for sale. No devil, you can't have them. No discouragement, you can't have them. You can't have them. Why? Because church is a brook in the way. I told Brother Johnny Pohazi some years ago, and he, rel he relayed the same feelings to me. I said, dude, I don't want to miss church because I feel like I'm going to miss something. 
I'm going to miss something. I'm going to miss somebody walking the aisle. I'm going to miss friendships reunited. I'm going to miss tears. I'm going to miss a truth. I'm going to miss something that I need. Church has always been exciting to me. It's always been something special to me. And I know why. Why? Because it's been a refresher for me. Because I go out Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and I fight traffic, and people call me number one, and people don't want me there, and battling and going around and, and trying to find a place to sleep and a place to eat. And sometimes you, you get lucky and find sweet spots, and sometimes you sit on the side of the road next to, to dead animals and you smell stuff all night and it's a bad situation and you're like, man, this stinks, literally. It stinks and you want to get out of there and it's a hard life for a trucker, for a, a single mom, for a single dad, for somebody who's just trying to get by. I've always found church, that oasis in the desert, a place, a brook in the way where I come and, and, and get the word of God. The Bible says that Jesus is the living water. And if I drink of him, I'll never thirst again. I'll never thirst again. Oh, but I get thirsty. I, now my eternal thirst is quenched. But man, oh man, I still live in the flesh and I got to go out into the world and I get thirsty. I get thirsty. Man, I listen to uh, 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 Curtis Hudson and Jack Howes and J. Frank Norris and, and Le, uh, uh, Lee Ro uh, Lester uh, Roloff and Lee Robertson and some of these old time preachers. And I'll, and I'll, I'll listen to the Bible. Why? Because I need that. I need that. I need that oasis. Have a brook in the way. Be a brook in the way and have a brook in the way. Because I'll tell you right now, if you're looking for others to be a brook in the way for you, many times you'll get dehydrated. If more Christians will get this truth, we can help each other. But I'm saying have a plan B, and that plan B is have a brook in the way. Have a brook in the way. Because if you have a constant brook in the way, you can always make sure that you are a brook in the way. Because I can't make you be a brook. I can't make you encourage me. I can't make you love me. But I can rely on his love and his brook. And as long as I, because I will, every man, every individual, every man will stand before God and give an account of himself before God. Why were you not a brook in the way? Well, nobody else encouraged me. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. See, the responsibility is not, does not, your obedience to the Bible does not hinge on the, on, on the, uh, the obedience of others. The obedience to the word of God hinges on you and you alone. Be a brook in the way. Be a brook in the way. Now, I want Three Rivers Baptist Church to be a brook in the way. And it has been for years. And I think we've got a great opportunity to do it again. People are saying, close the doors of the church. It's going to get radical. It's going to get scary. Well, that's why I say, bless God, we put on the whole armor of God and grab our sword and say, we're not going on defense. We're going on offense. And we're going to spread the gospel more than we ever have before. And we're going to preach what's right more than we ever have before because we live in a crooked and perverse nation. And it needs the gospel. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3 that uh, we're supposed to live as a life and be a light in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. And how do we do that? By being a brook in the way. Be a brook in the way. I want you to feel refreshed when you come to Three Rivers Baptist Church. The church is a brook in the way. That's the, that's the brook to have. The brook to have is the church. There are all kinds of people here this morning. Your hearts are heavy. Your hearts are broken. You feel discouraged. You feel lonely. You feel burdened like you never have before. And there ought to be a brook in the way for you. There ought to be a brook in the way. I always get it, and I'm closing. Miss Jennifer, you can come. I get excited. Man, the announcements are always exciting. The announcements, the precursor to the service, the singing, amen, the fellowship, shaking hands and going around and seeing folks, and we sing. People at our church say, uh, I had a lady uh, come back here some time ago, and she asked me, oh, you don't have a worship service. Like, worship. I said, yes, we do. We do have a worship service. We just do it differently than you. In a lot of churches, the preaching has become the hurry up and get it over so we can shake our booty for Jesus. So we can put our hands unsanctimoniously in the air and sway and accidentally touch the hand of that person I'm not married to. And that guy behind me is looking at my t tight jeans and looking at my curves. And that other guy's like, he's looking at my tight jeans and my tight curves too. Uh, 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 don't tell, there are homos in them churches, man. I don't care what y'all say. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and putting their hands in, uh, don't you feel it? And they say the same thing over and over and over 
and over and, okay, you get it. The Lord is in this place. Say it with me, not you. The Lord is in this, come on, man, come on. Come on, hurry up and get the preaching over so we can get to that. The preaching is like uh, the, uh, 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 the clown that entertains the, the king during the recess time. No. In Ezekiel, they opened the word of God and they stood for six hours. And then they fell on their faces, convicted of their sin. And then they got up and rejoiced because God is a God of redemption. And it says that the old people cried and the, and the, and the, and the, um, uh, the young people rejoiced. Man, oh man, the word of God is the focal point. That's why sit down, shut up, knock it off, quit doing what you're doing when it's preaching time. Stop drawing, stop fiddling, don't get up and go, come out and go out and come in. No, I get it. There's, um, we have people on call and whatnot. I, I get that. But when it's preaching time, don't call under the pews. Sit down and listen. Listen to the word of God. It's the most important book in the entire world and hang the world and anybody else that has anything to say about it. The word of God will change your life. You say, Brother Jake, we're talking about being a brook in the way. Yeah, I'm talking about being a brook in the way, a rushing brook. A lot of people, we're a brook in the way, but we're like this little itty-bitty trickling stream or we're a stagnant cesspool. Be a stream that flows, that's refreshing. There's all kinds of, uh, a liquid, uh, of aqua bodies in this nation, but most of them you can't drink. You can't drink. Can people drink of you? Can people take the substance that you're giving? I, I, I talked to these two people yesterday, counseling them for marriage. And she said, you are not what I was expecting. I said, that's what usually people say. I said, you were expecting some, an older fella, gray hair probably, or no hair, white collar. She said, started laughing. I'm like, no, we ain't that way. I pulled up in a leather jacket, fresh haircuts, flowing everywhere. Flipped it back like Fabio. No, uh, I got, <laughs> got out and I was talking to him and I was just real with him, just real. And that's what people are looking for, real, wholesome, genuine, transparent, saying, man, I relate to that. I relate to that. We're not strangers. I love you. I love you. I fight for you in prayer. I am your brook in the desert. I'm your pastor. You don't have not have access to my brothers. Kevin's like, I texted you yesterday. You didn't text me back. Um, I, I tried. I called. He texted. I called. It's on the road. I couldn't. I can't multitask like that. I, mm -mm. The, those things are rolling death traps, and I'm, I went through safety courses with Penske. I got certificates. I got awards. I got coats and trophies. I got all that stuff. So now I'm like, Mr. Safe. That's not a good following distance. Dad, we went to Greenville. And I was driving. He's like, step on it, dude. I'm like, I can't. I I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind. <laughs> Man, they said, I mean, I took class after class after class after class after class. And now I'm like, Mr. Safe. I want to be a brook. In, a, a brook. A brook. You, listen, in, I'll stop. Uh, West Virginia. Stopping on, a, I mean, I'm, uh, an incline. Uh, uh. Uh, we were going, a bunch of folks coming. It was a huge wreck. Helicopter had to come in, land, stop traffic, ambulance on one side, helicopter on the other. Uh, semi uh, tipped over, burst into flames. Dude, he, no way he lived. Um, traffic was stopped, and there was this truck trying to get in, trying to get in, trying to get in. Nobody would let him in. Nobody, and you guys know what that's like. No, you're going to let me in. But this guy, I think he was newer. He had to be, he was a newer. All the trucks now are like automatics and stuff. And, uh, He's trying to get in, trying to get in, and I, we're rolling past and because the lane's speed changes. And I can see him. He's, I can see his disposition. He's like frantic, trying to get over, because on the CBs, guys will get on there and they're like, you need to be in the right lane. Oh, you need to be in the left lane. And he's trying to get over. And I see him. So I slow down. And I open it up. And I block the cars that are behind me. And he's got his turn signal on for like 10 minutes. I let him in. You know what that was? A very small brook in the way. That's a brook in the way. Brother Paul Hazi carrying all his stuff in all the time. I tell him, hey, let me get that. You know what that is? That's a small brook in the way. That's a brook in the way. Be kind to everybody. Why? Who's having a tough time? You are. You are. 
So I'll be a brook for you, and you be a brook for me, and we'll both be refreshed. And guess who's joined in that? The Holy Spirit of God and a three-fold cord is not easily broken. You know what happens? Listen, I, quantity in the church, and we need more people. No, we need quality. Deep-rooted Christians who get it and who love each other. I love you. Kirsten, I love you. I was honored. Kirsten went out to a restaurant for the first time last night, and we got to take her. And she got cheesecake, tra- strawberry pancakes, and I went, mm. That's mm, sugar rush right there. Jamie, I love you. Brother Ed, I love you. Kirsten, or uh, uh, no, I got it. Kinsey, I love you. Megan, I love you. Caden, Sarah, I love you. Caden, I love you. Miss Sarah, I love you. Joe, I love you. Miss Renee, I love you. Miss Tessa, I love you. Miss Crystal, I love you. Who did I miss? Don't tell Ernesto, I don't want him to punch me. Uh, As a pastor, Randy, I love you, you knucklehead. Alex, you've been a brook in the way. You don't know that, but the Holy Spirit of God led you here. That paper on the King James Bible you wrote, the equipment you gave, the effort that you've put in, your zeal, your passion, brother, the devil's gonna do everything he can to dry you up. But I'm gonna be a brook in the way for you. I love you, Alex. Dad, I love you. Brother Tom Jewell, I love you. Brother Steve Jewell, I love you. Miss Jewell, I love you. Brother Park, I love you. Lenny? No, 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 no. I love you, man. I love you. Bill, I love you. Logan, I love you. Noah, I love you. Greg, I love you. Francisco, I, brother, I love you. I do, I love you. Brother Joe, I love you. Miss Inga, I love you. Miss White, I love you. Mr. and Mrs. Van Zulen, I, I love you. Yes, what, you, guys aren't, you guys aren't a brook. You're a river. Yes, You're a river, and don't you ever move to Virginia. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Pip, I love you. I love you, despite being a Packers fan. I love you. Lucas, I love you. Miss Jennifer, my big sister. Or aunt, I don't know what we prefer you as. My, my, my soul sister, I love you. Miss Hillary in the nursery, I love you. Babies in the nursery, I love you. Brother Dan, I love you. Mr. and Mrs. Pohazi, I love them. Arif and Carrie, I love them. Man, Arif and Carrie are growing. You want to know why? Because Mr. and Mrs. Pohazi have been a brook in the way. Be a brook in the way. Be a refreshment to a soul who's weary. Heavenly Father, I love you. Um, And Lord, I I know I went over, and I say that often. But Lord, uh, I think this is an important time for our church. Uh, Lord, we've been through a lot together. We've been through some storms together. And I don't think we would have made it if we didn't have some brooks in the way. Lord, thank you for times of refreshing. Thank you for the oasis that you give in your word and in your building, your church and your people. Well, Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you would help us to bear, help us bear our burdens and help us to bear the burdens of others. What I want to do is I want to ask you to stand, and I want you, as Miss Jennifer begins to pray, play, I want you to come forward and ask God to help you to be a brook in the way, an encouragement to somebody else. Hey, you may need encouraged. You may need encouraged, but be an encourager and you'll be encouraged. I promise you the Bible doesn't lie. It doesn't fail you. Be an encouragement to someone else. You will find encouragement. You will find a brook in the way. Come on now, amen, amen, amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. You can remain standing. I want to say this very quickly. Uh, point out Kirsten. Kirsten, how can you be a brook in the way? You think God has taken... God, now what? Now what am I going to do? You had an incredibly sweet spirit before. Keep that spirit. You know, your mama needs a brook in the way. Your daddy needs a brook in the way. You may be the thing that binds the family. Be a brook in the way. Jesus found it in something, in somebody. You're not useless, not pointless. You don't have no purpose. You have a purpose. And it's to love everybody. Weep for the lost. Weep for the lost and salvage the saved. Bedroom? Okay. Okay. We'll get it done. No, I got you. Come together. Come together right now over me. <laughs> over. Come on now. No. <laughs> a brook in the way. Amen. Be a brook. Brother Kevin. And sing. We'll never say goodbye.